Hi everyone. So in this lecture, we'll go over timers and counters. So if you can see on the screen, this is where we stopped the last time where we were playing with memory bits. Now we'll go and try a couple of timers and see how they work and how does the uh, counters work. As far as the timer numbers go, like how many timers we have, if you go into CPU parameter, wait for it to load up then it's under memory setting detail setting so we have this process set up for 2k timer which is 2048 timers and 512 counters also you can see it has long timer retentive timer and retentive long timer they all function the same way it's just that retentive timers will retain its value even when you power off the PLC so if you go back to the program now timers in Mitsubishi are called by T as an instruction so let's start with M10 so that means when, whenever M10 is on we'll have T0 count up to K250 that means and I'll put another rung underneath here so you can see it when T0 is on F7, oh. M11. So, what this means is when M10 is on, T0 will start timing, and when T10 is, oh, my bad, this would be T0. When T0 is reaches the time value of 250 milliseconds, M11 would be on. We'll send this change to the PLT and do a yes <coughs> and when you toggle this you'll see the timing and actually this is 225 seconds and not 250 milliseconds I was wrong so while it's timing I'll show you one more thing this little guy up here at its statement when you click on it now you can double click and say timers and also okay if you see in the back t0 was on m11 is on so oh, you, let's go back to this little statement thing when you click on the statement and you click on the rung it's and double click on the side it would come up with this pop-up what this means is you can name something and if you want you can show it up here so we'll go ahead and show it so if you see now it has timers now if we scroll up, add bits, coils, relays, and do again display, it's going to show that up as well. So if uh, we have to send the changes when you make this thing. So now let's turn it back off. Everything went back off. We'll change that to... Oh, also keep in mind you have to get it out of this mode, which is this guy. Now we can change this back to two and a half second, send the changes back, and so if I toggle it, we'll count for two and a half seconds. Once the timer's up, M11's on. Also, you can move the timer value into a D register if you want to use somewhere or display on the HMI. It's pretty straightforward. What we can do is do an SM400, which is an always on bit move t0 into d0 it's that simple so when I do that it's always going to move the timer value into d0 so here turn it off turn it back on there you go that's how you can make it start timing and move the value so that's how you use timers in Mitsubishi IQR PLC now let's look at the counters real quick they function in similar fashion as timers so we'll do the same bit M10 and oh, my bad okay M10 shift F C0 K3 okay let's do this 
what we'll do is we'll do a rising edge pulse of this thing so we can toggle it a couple of times and get a counter to count up because this is not a one shot you would always if, if you leave the rung in front of it on it's going to keep on counting every scan so you have to have a one shot in front of it so here what we will do is we'll do a c0 and m12 and you can also reset the counter and timer if you have to but I usually, I mean, counters you have to reset. Timer, you, if you take the rung off in front of it, it's going to go back to zero. So what we'll do is M11, actually M12, now M13, yeah, M13 would reset C0. There you go. So now if I send it, and we are going to go in and add a statement. So you guys know how to do that. You click on that, double click, type in counter. Display navig. If you don't do the display, it doesn't show up here. It just shows up in the program. So double click, display, and send the changes. There we go. So toggle this guy. There you go. C1, C0 is 1, C0 is 2, and C0 is 3. As soon as we are at 3, it turns on M12. Now if I toggle this guy, it would reset C0 and turn off its output. So, I'll do it again so you guys can see it. First time, second time, and third time. There we go. As soon as we hit the third time, C0 is on, and M12 is on. Now, you could toggle this and reset the timer. So. That's how easy timers are in uh, Mitsubishi. And you can also move the counter values similarly like the timer. So if we come down here, SM400, move C0, D1. So now you would move your counter value to the D register. And you can use that to program or compare stuff. So let's do it again. One, go, two, and three. Now we can come back and reset, which is zero it out. So that's how counters work in Mitsubishi IQR. I'll see you in the next lecture now.